once again, thank you for honoring um, my invitation to this uh, press briefing that I need to, to do today. Um, the press statement is following my seven day suspension from parliament. Dear fellow citizens, today I speak to you with heavy heart, burdened by the erosion of fairness and justice within the esteemed chambers of the Zambian parliament, which is with utmost urgency that I shed light on the concerning state of our democratic institutions. As you are aware, the role of the Speaker of the Parliament or the National Assembly is one of the tremendous responsibilities. A guardian of fairness, impartiality, and equal representation. They hold the power to transcend partisan divides and ensure that the diverse voices of our nation are given a platform. Unfortunately, we find ourselves witnessing a departure from these principles. Equity is the bedrock of democracy, embodying the very essence of fair representation. It requires a commitment to unbiased facilitation, granting every member of parliament equal opportunities to express their viewpoints and contribute meaningfully to the legislative process. It is disheartening to observe the erosion of these principles as some members resort to tribalism and regional biases in their debates. On the 14th of June, 2023, Honorable Charles Milupi, nominated member of parliament and the Minister of Infrastructure and Urban Development made repeated references to Northwestern and Western provinces as the poorest regions in the country and also as, as provinces which had been neglected which have been neglected by all the successive governments. These statements, while provocative to those residing in the northern block of the country, were not effectively addressed by the speaker. The incident, ex the in incident which gives an example of regional and disparities bias statement which can lead to volatile and exchange of further tensions. Sadly, in response to, to this regional bias, I too succumbed to emotion and made remarks referring to my fellow members as foolish. I criticized Mr. Milupi for his failure to acknowledge the economic challenges faced by Luapula, Muchinga, Northern and Eastern provinces. I must admit that my emotion, my, I must admit that my emotional response was not in line with the decorum expected from any member of parliament. However, it is deeply concerning that the disciplinary actions taken by the speaker appeared inconsistent and biased. The conduct of Honorable Chushka Sanda, who is also the information minister, and their alleged bias ruling cannot be ignored. The behavior of Honorable Kassanda towards the speaker was worse in a nature than myself, as I was in fact not addressing the speaker but my tribe's name. Similar instances <clears throat> in the past did not receive equal treatment, raising questions about the fairness, impartiality of our parliamentary proceedings. Moreover, the recent protests of silence by opposition members of parliament and some independent members of parliament on the 20th of 
July 2023 further highlights concerns regarding the speaker's impartiality. When conversations become tainted by tribal or regional agendas, it is the duty of the speaker to intervene and steer the discourse back to unbiased and meaningful discussion that serve the best interests of all citizens. I must express profound disappointment in my own personal experience on, tw on the 21st of July, 2023. I was suspended from parliament for remarks demanding fairness in the distribution of development, particularly advocating for the development of the Kashkishu Chiengi Road. While I acknowledge the need for more measured language during debates, I believe my suspension underscores the presence of regional bias within our parliamentary proceedings. It is troubling that only individuals from certain regions are labeled as lawbreakers, while those from other regions while those from other regions are held as virtuous. This incident serves as a reminder that we must address the underlying issues causing regional disparities and foster national unity through inclusive development strategies and equitable policy making. We must uphold the principles of democracy, fair representation, and the protection of human rights. Practices that promote bias undermine the integrity of parliament and also undermine the integrity of parliamentary proceedings, eroding the trust and confidence of Zambian citizens in their elected representatives. Bear with me. Um, I'm trying to Therefore, allow me to call upon the international community, human rights organizations, and fellow democratic nations to closely monitor the situation unfolding in Zambia, especially with the house where we are expected to be a place of justice and democracy. That's the National Assembly, the Parliament, and what is prevailing in our country at the moment. Your support, solidarity, and influence are crucial in addressing these issues, working towards a society that upholds human dignity, respects diversity, perspectives, and promotes inclusivity, inclusivity and justice. I've been suspended for speaking the truth, for standing up for Wapula, where justice is found. I've been suspended for demanding fairness, for raising my voice, but they sought to silence and discredit my choice. Leading the protest of silence, I dared to resist, but a day later suspended with clenched fists. A victim of their fear, yet my voice won't fail. I will forever crusade for the people of Wapu and Zambians, where justice is made. Together, let us create the Zambia we aspire to be. A Zambia where the Speaker of Parliament embodies fairness, where parliamentary proceedings reflect the true spirit of honor and integrity.
true unity and unwavering commitment to democratic principles, we can restore the trust of our citizens and foster an environment where every voice is heard, valued and respected. Thank you for your attention. And may we find the courage to stand up for justice and equality in our democratic journey. I thank you. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Good morning, Honorable. My name is Victoria Kayeri from Ghanaian TV. Yes, ma'am. Having admitted that you might have acted in an emotional manner at the time you were responding to the Minister of Infrastructure, don't you think, again, yesterday after your suspension, you did act in an emotional manner where you uttered certain words towards this journalist that was seemingly capturing you as you were walking out of parliament and uh, there has been a docket opened what is your response to that in relation to what happened yesterday uh, thank you so much um i must say this uh, you are a journalist and you've been to parliament several times and uh, if you recall corre uh, correctly, or if my, my mind serves me right, whenever UPNG in opposition walked out, we never took photos of them when they were just leaving the chamber. We were taking photos of them outside the chamber, outside the building. The area where the journalist was, he was right there in front of the door, the main door, and the, what I said to him, why are you taking photos of me? Can you stop what you're doing? And the guy was smiling. What to my surprise, you see the way you've come as many journalists. That's the house, the National Assembly, where all the, main, all the media houses are, should be treated fairly. If it was a fair thing, I would have not seen only one journalist. National Assembly has a photographer. National Assembly ha a, has people who are working in the media house who take photos. If National Assembly wanted to take the photos of the walk of the shame, they are there. Who should do it? And they have cameras. When I was walking out, I said to the gentleman, can you stop taking photos of me? And the gentleman was very excited, happy, you know, zooming in. So I said, who sent you to take photos of me? And when you say I use other words, you must understand of what is happening in the house. I'll give you the best example. If you look closely what is going on in Parliament, we are there sent to talk and not to be silenced of God. Each time we try to stand on the left-hand side, our colleagues are always standing up on point of order, point of order, point of order, and they call us names, not even a single day, even insults, insults. Not even a single day you've seen any of them being suspended. No one has ever been suspended. What Honorable Chushka Sanda did was worse than what I did. When I was walking out of parliament, I was talking to the members. I said, you are the cause of all these problems because Honorable Milupi was insisting that these areas have been de developed. So when you see me walking out like that, and I'm thinking, this is now the place where democracy is supposed to prevail. What next? If that place democracy is killed, what next for the nation? When you want to compact something, there will be pressure. And when it pops up, it doesn't pop up nicely. I didn't even, uh, like I've seen that uh, I assaulted him. He has to go. Videos are there. Videos are there. I was walking towards him to say, can you delete that?
Yes, sir. Perhaps a follow-up to my colleague's um, question, other regressions that have come out in relation to the um, question that you just answered, the remark that you have just responded to, is that you also start from the same journalist. Can you, you know, deny the allegations or indeed agree? I didn't spit on him. You watched the video. I didn't spit on him. He was going downstairs. So I was talking to him like this. If, if that's what they call spitting, then I don't know what it is. When this government has made a decision to reduce numbers in parliament, they will do everything to those they feel they are strong. They started with Bowman. And they will find a reason. They will find a reason. You go, I think you are a journalist, you are very free. One go on the uh, National Assembly website, get the whole video, it's there, and see. Watch it, brother. I know this government, and I know how they want to penetrate Luapula. They will make sure most of us from Luapula will be found with cases to answer so that they can reduce numbers. In by-elections, they will make it. But they cannot make it if they went in general election, especially in Chiang. You go and watch the video. Yes, sir. Yeah. Morning, my name is Francis from Southern Region. Yes, sir. You, 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 you've made some allegations against the, the speaker. Just um, for some clarity, are you saying that the speaker is bias towards the uh, elite? Yes, the, this, the Madam Speaker is biased, very biased. She is. The best example, look, watch the video of what Shushika Sanda did and what I did. Then judge for yourselves as Zambians. And you know what? You know, one funny thing is that you can see the one seated. I cannot lean against this chair, okay, because of my spine uh, uh, issues. I tried to get, I tried to get credentials because the doctor had put me on 14 days bed rest. I was not granted. Who approves that? It's the speaker. I was not granted for 14 days. So I was forced to be going in. I sit a bit. I leave, I leave the chamber. But Honorable Chushka Sanda, Honorable Njamba, we are given credentials. They were all sick. They were also sick. What do you call that? And when the speaker uh, was doing the ruling for Honorable Chushka Sanda, is when you are reprimanding a member of parliament, according to the standing orders, you're supposed to make a member of parliament to stand. But she was seated. You saw that. She was seated. And on top of that, the speaker said, oh, I forgot to welcome my sister, the Honorable Minister of Information, and also uh, my brother, Honorable Njamba. Then the left hand side said, what about Chiengi? She just ignored it. What do you call that? Watch parliament closely. What do you call that? She's the mother of the house. And we expect, even if she doesn't like me, she should have said, oh yes, even Chiengi. But because you can tell there's so much of hatred which is there. Look at the letters that have been written to me by after some of the members from UPND, like Dr. Kata. Dr. Katuakwe was owing me money for some time, 900 kwacha. And when I sent him a note to say, stop this rubbish, otherwise, instead of asking me, Honorable, what do you mean otherwise? He goes to write a letter to the speaker. I, I seek your, your agent uh, action. My life is threatened. How do you threaten your friend? Okay. Does it make sense? I have even WhatsApp messages. That guy got my stuff last year. He only managed to give me money. 900 kwacha. He only managed to give me money in uh, when we're on, in tours. I think June or so. And that's what I was referring to. That I'm going to expose also your weakness. Whenever I want to... Uh, to whenever I want to... To debate, you're always in point of order, point of order, as if you're an angel. Otherwise, I'm going to expose you. But see what is going on. And they, 
rush quickly to write letters to us. You've seen some members of parliament from the right uh, hand side of uh, the, the, the speaker. They literally insult us. Even that day when I was leaving parliament, they were busy, you know, yelling at me. Lenshina, Lenshina. And the speaker takes it that I was talking to her. I've not been given a chance to explain. I thought by apologizing in the letter that I wrote, I'll be called. But nothing like that. And I didn't even, to me, when I apologized, it was because it was just of me shouting. Lady Dino, when she was reading the ruling, she was saying the disrespect towards her, a pointing at her, which I never did. Watch the video closely. So, lastly, for me, Honorable, what then, what, what form of action, uh, in line with the rules and regulations of the House, as well as the Republican Council, what action would you want to be taken against the Speaker? And what could be your, your appeal to fellow opposition MPs who you feel have suffered the same injustices? I think uh, the only way to show the world, because numbers speak in Parliament, the only way to show the world that we're protesting is to move the motion of impeachment. Move her. Because the speaker herself is holding the unity of the country. And now, if you see her doing that, what next? How many people? You've seen, I, I think, even the member of parliament, I think, is Wang or Ferrer, was also, there's a time when he was forced to, you know, to, to start exchanging words with the speaker. It's not that we are disrespected. It's because we feel we are honorable members, elected, and we're there to represent the voices of our people. And when you are told to shut up, just check whenever you stand up how our colleagues react. Imagine Honorable Chisopa, I don't know, he was laughing, not laughing, smiling. That offended the speaker. Why do you like laughing? You question. So this side of us, anything you hear, whenever they say you're making noise or what, it's just the left-hand side of the speaker. The right hand side of the speaker, there's no one who makes any problem. When they are calling me, Len Shina, even that day when I was leaving, when she says I, I, I went and I came back, I was answering back, I think it should be Honorable Mabeto was saying, Len Shina, Len Shina. Because that guy sits the other side, almost after the, 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 the speaker. And she said I was talking to her. Honorable Campiongo was busy rising on a, doing a point of order. I think it's Honorable Singombe. He said, shut up. Uh, he said, uh, sit down. Then Honorable Campiongo said, shut up. Do you know what the speaker said? If you tell your colleagues to shut up, you are, you are insulting me. That's the mouth of the speaker. So our colleagues, when they insult us, <laughs> when they insult us, the speaker is not being insulted. But as when we say something to them like shut up, the speaker is being insulted. So she's biased.